Good morning, big girls. Today, we are going over 10 mind-bogglingly easy draft picks to make, meaning they are so good at their price, there's just no chance I'm ever passing up at these guys based on what their current ADP is. Now, we did this exact same video last week. Put it in reverse, Terry. Eight mind-bogglingly bad picks. Okay, so guys, whomst I hate their ADP. We will link that down below, so make sure you go check it out. All right, so 10 players. Start off with some QBs. We'll work our way down the receivers, running backs, maybe a tight end. I actually don't know if I have any tight ends on this list, but it's going to be a good list regardless. It's a good day. It's a Tuesday. Y'all will see this Friday. The week was great. I love you. Let's tuck our shirts in. First man's up on this list is someone that I just feel like the market has completely cooled on for just not great reasons in general, and that's Jalen Hurts, all right? He is the quarterback two right now, and all of this information, all this ADP is based on underdog drafts right now. It is the only place where there are actually real drafts going on right now. Uh, if you want to draft with us, against us, with me, we are ripping underdog drafts, you know, probably multiple times a day at this point. Free to join the Discord down below, which is where we are dropping the links. But Underdog is not free. All these drafts are $3. If you come in first, second, or third place, you collect your money at the end of the year. So they're the most fun drafts to do right now. And this is where all that information is coming from. Everybody's paying to get into these leagues, which means they take the drafting extremely seriously. So the ADPs are extremely sharp and are probably where these players are going to be going by the end of the summer, ESPN, Yahoo, CBS, wherever your bitch ass drafts outside of Underdog, all right? So head over to Underdog, use code BDGE if it's your first time on there. They'll double your deposit. Jalen Hurts, he's currently going QB2, but 37th overall, which would put him in the fourth round, which is crazy, right? We all went on this like QB craze last year where we were drafting him at the 2-3 turn. I legitimately don't think those were bad draft picks whatsoever. And you look at the situation for Philly, and I get it. He struggled down the stretch last year. I think a lot of that had to do with injuries, to be honest with you. They lost Shane, Shane Steichen. Uh, the offense was a little bit you know, different, I think. They, they just weren't clicking as much as they were. I'm not really worried about it because I think a lot of it had to do with Jalen Hurts' health. But they locked up both A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith with extensions. They brought over Saquon Barkley. And I think the most important thing is that they just simply did not ban the tush push in the NFL. It's something that has worked at like a 95% clip for them. And sure, maybe Saquon gets a few more goal line carries this year. Maybe uh, that takes away from Jalen Hurts' numbers. But he has gone for double-digit rushing touchdowns in three straight years. All right, That's not going anywhere. You're literally getting an RB1 in your quarterback slot. He was the QB2 in fantasy last year. He was the quarterback one in fantasy points per game the year prior. Last year, again, we were drafting him at the 2-3 turn. And what did he do for you? He set career high in pass attempts, passing yards, passing touchdowns, and he scored 15 rushing touchdowns, right? If you are able to get Jalen Hurts at the beginning of the fourth round, like that is one of the most stable pieces of a fantasy team you could possibly fathom at this point in the offseason, all right? Even mid-third, late third, when guys are reaching for like the Zay Flowers is or even like the Travis Kelsey's, like take someone I feel really, really good about that we're not hoping re-enters their prime all right Jalen Hurts at the 401 37th overall is crazy value in underdog drafts right now staying in the NFC East the quarterback for Dallas Dak Prescott is going at the QB 9 spot 84th overall at the 802 this might even be more absurd than Jalen Hurts' spot all right this team when you look at Dallas's makeup they got rid of Tony Pollard right they let him walk to Tennessee in that backfield they have Ezekiel Elliott right? The the schlob of Ezekiel Elliott right now, who might also be on this list a little bit later, and Rico Dowdle. Like, Rico Dowdle is not pushing a backfield to any sort of heights, okay? Pushing a backfield to like Muggsy Bogues level heights. When I look at the makeup of this team, when I look at that backfield, all that says to me is that Dallas is going to be like top three in pretty much every statistical passing category from a volume standpoint this year. There's just no way around it. Last year, Dak literally led the NFL in passing touchdowns with 36. He was third in yards, fourth in attempts, while shoveling carries down the woke Tony Pollard's throat. Fucking bars right now, right? And this man, like, kind of yearly in and out adds, like, 250 and three touchdowns on the ground. He had six rushing touchdowns in each of his first three seasons, so that is also in his bag. All right, so when I look at Dak Prescott, he's someone whose passing floor – I think it's legitimately 4,500 passing yards and 30 touchdowns. Like, you're hoping you get that from bottom quarterback ones. I think that is a floor. I think if he gets lucky with some rushing upside, uh, rushing touchdowns, I actually also just think him and CeeDee Lamb can both lead passing 
quarterbacks and receivers in all statistical categories this year. Like, I just think the floor of the Cowboys passing offense volume-wise is going to be so high. So Dak is an easy smash at the quarterback nine spot. And listen, we're getting a little deeper now, and we are actually, this is kind of fucking crazy, but we are staying within the NFC East, and that is Daniel Jones. And hear me out, hear me out. At the end of your best ball drafts, at the end of your draft, because on underdog you are drafting in 18 players on your roster. It's a big draft. You're playing best ball, which means you don't decide who to sit and start. You just automatically get started whoever has the best games that week, all right? And Daniel Jones is getting picked 205th overall, which is borderline undrafted at quarterback 30, all right? You have, like, Daniel Jones. You got Bryce Young. You got Drake May, like, in that area, okay? So Daniel Jones, to me, a guy who was a top 10 fantasy quarterback, like, two years ago, this is the easiest pick in best ball drafts right now. The 17th, 18th round is where you literally get, like, a fourth on the depth chart type guys that might, might not even make the roster, all right? With Daniel Jones, he adds Malik Neighbors. With Saquon gone, I think that might lead to just more passing attempts. Uh, Jalen Hyatt coming into his second year. Listen, I can't make a great argument for why this passing offense is going to be good, but this is the exact type of guy you're looking for in best ball because of his rushing upside. He's a guy who will rip off 500 and 600 yards on the ground, right? And what that would mean is he will have some high ceiling weekly games, and that is what you're looking for in best ball. Again, I'm not like I don't want to start him in my one quarterback league. He's a QB2 in Superflex, but 205th overall at quarterback 30 in best ball drafts. People are drafting him as if he might lose a quarterback battle. Like, what What are we What are we doing over here? All right, so those are three quarterbacks that I think are just, like, screaming fucking values right now in underdog drafts. We'll move over to the wide receiver position. We'll stay in the NFC East, I suppose. I really, really like Brandon Cooks, where he's going in underdog drafts right now. I know he's been uh, pretty mediocre since he came over to Dallas. He's... You know, right around 650, 700 yards back-to-back -back years. He did have eight touchdowns last year, uh, which is a really, really nice number if you're getting a guy where he's going wide receiver 61, all right? Current ADP, 128 overall. So you're talking about, like, the 11th round. And again, I'm just looking to get pieces of this Dallas offense. Like, you can – realistically, the way the drafts work out is, like, you get CeeDee Lamb number one or two overall – or you like don't get a piece of this passing offense. You can get Jake Ferguson in the middle, which I think is fine value as well. But then like everybody else in underdog drafts right now is going outside of the top 125 picks. It's Cooks at 128, Jalen Tolbert much later, uh, Zeke and Rico Dowdle like picks 140 to 160. So I'm like, if I'm high enough on this this passing offense where I think Dak might throw the ball 600, 650, 670 times on the season, then yeah, I probably want some pieces of the passing offense outside of just CeeDee Lamb, and Cooks is the number two. Michael Gallup is gone. He's on uh, the Raiders roster at this point, and Jalen Tolbert's a guy I like, and I would take some shots on him in the 17th, 18th round as well, but Cooks is like the only solidified pass catcher in this group right now. So Cooks, pick 128, wide receiver 61, smash. Josh Palmer, another boring player, but at pick 126, wide receiver 57 so just a few spots higher than brandon cooks i think i like palmer's floor even better than i like brandon cooks is right now everybody's just elated about lad mcconkey but i actually think josh palmer's like a decent if not a pretty good bet to lead this team in targets like when you look at what they lost keenan's gone mike williams is gone austin eckler is gone and just these three by themselves have averaged 313 targets per season over the last three years gerald everett is also gone when I tell you there is like literally no target competition left in this offense, that is literally what I'm telling you, okay? And Josh Palmer is a dude that Herbert clearly trusts, this organization clearly trusts, and he's like the only thing left here. Quentin Johnson was god-awful last year, and I wanted to give him another chance, but when I went and looked at Matt Harmon's reception perception profile of Quentin Johnson, he literally had like first percentile success rate versus man's own and press last year. And I don't mean first like he's elite. I mean he's like literally the woke, like one of the worst he's ever charted. Uh, I just Quentin Johnson probably just is not is just not him. And we're going to figure that out very quickly. I just think Palmer's probably going to be out on the field for 95 percent of the snaps out there in L.A. And it's like, sure, you know, how often is this team going to throw the ball? But I would be really surprised if Palmer doesn't have like 100 plus targets uh, in L.A. this year. So Palmer, when it comes to like my 12th round pick in underdog drafts, uh, I think I have an ownership share of like 65 percent on him, which is, you know, pretty fucking high, but I'll continue to do it until I, I, I think by the end of the summer, realistically, I think Josh Palmer will be like an eighth round pick in best ball draft. So get him as much as you can right now. If you have been drafting on underdog, I'm curious to know who your highest shares of players are right now. And that's one of the coolest part about underdogs. Like every draft is from $3 or higher, but we just rip off, you know, like a hundred different $3 drafts throughout the summer. And again, we dropped the link in the discord. So if you're not in the discord, go join and you'll probably see a couple of them 
throw out this week. And it keeps track of the percentages of times that you've drafted players. So by the end of the summer, you know, like, okay, I love this dude. He is my, you know, he's in one of my top five most drafted players. And you can go by position. And Palmer's up there for me. So I'm curious for those of y'all that have been ripping underdog drafts for the last couple months, who are your highest owned players thus far? Continuing down the list, that was five. Let's move to number six. Curtis Samuel, wide receiver out in Buffalo. Now, I will say I like Curtis Samuel a lot. I thought he was going to be a little bit more of a value than he than he is right now. Uh, he's the 100th overall pick, wide receiver 48, but that is in the beginning of the ninth round. So I thought Samuel was going to be around where Josh Palmer was going in like the 12th round, and there's easy fucking smash. But I still do find myself fucking with Curtis Samuel a ton this year. He was he was low-key great down the stretch for Washington last year, kind of hopped over Jahan Dotson, was outproducing the shit out of him, and now he lands in a prime spot where – Gabriel Davis is gone and Stefan Diggs are gone, right? And that's probably like 250 targets a year basically combined that are no, no no longer in that offense coming from Josh Allen. And sure, like Dalton Kincaid, you, you could make the story that a lot of different players in Buffalo are going to step up. Dalton Kincaid should definitely see a ton more targets this year. Keon Coleman coming in should get uh, a decent amount of targets. Khalil Shakir could do a little something, something there. But when I look at Josh Allen historically, he has always taken his slot wide receiver and just like had games where he peppered the fuck out of them with targets like Jameson Crowder, Cole Beasley, Zay Jones. Like when Curtis Samuel has four games this year of like 13 or more targets individually in those games, don't be surprised. I'm telling you here, all right? So I love Curtis Samuel. The more he creeps up in price, the more hesitant I am with him. But around this price, 10th, 11th, 12th round, like every single time. The last wide receiver on this list, and this is crazy. And again, this list is not like my favorite players overall in fantasy. They're just the best values that I see right now, whom that I think, whom I think are going to fucking slide up in drafts by the end of the summer. So it's not that like I want Daniel Jones to be my QB one, but he's a QB 30 right now. And he'll probably be like the QB 25 by the end of the summer. And we want to squeeze as much fucking juice out of that lime to make a beautiful margarita in your roster share percentage by the end of the summer. So Adam Thielen is the last wide receiver I have on this list. He is the wide receiver 73 going 164th overall feels a little fucking ridiculous if you ask me all right uh he had over 100 catches last year and don't get me wrong he was abysmal over the second half of last year i i mean yeah he was he, he didn't put up like zeros but he was getting you like five catches for 40 yards and they've invested a lot into the wide receiver position over the last two years right jonathan mingo and then traded up into the first for xavier leggett that obviously brought in Deontay johnson so there's a very clear path for Thielen to kind of get phased out of this offense i don't really see it happening that clearly and that smoothly again he's wide receiver 73 i still think adam Thielen can put up 700 yards 750 yards in an offense that should be a lot more improved i think bryce young is going to take a step up they invested heavily into their offensive line a lot of big free agent signings so i think i'll have more time for this offense to develop deontay johnson probably going to come in and command 115 125 targets but i still think again adam Thielen can hover around 80 to 90 targets on the year 700 750 yards you know five touchdowns whatnot so i think down here i, I think Thielen is a guy that i've found myself drafting a ton of in the 14th, 15th, and 16th round, despite how last year finished. Let's move over to the running back position. And my fucking guy, Isaiah Pacheco, is going 47th overall in underdog. Now, underdog drafts are half PPR, so they are incentivizing for touchdowns, not necessarily full PPR, where you're like only looking for pass catching back. So it's a very like touchdown-centric platform, and I think Pacheco fits that perfectly you're looking at Pacheco and then the guys going around him or in front of him like Keenan Allen Christian Kirk Terry McLaurin like give me a fucking break last year the guy went for nearly 1200 yards from scrimmage nine touchdowns in 14 games all right and probably one or two of those were limited I don't think people understand like how goaded Isaiah Pacheco was without McKinnon in the lineup last year McKinnon got hurt for a lot of the end of the year and he's no longer in Kansas City Look at these fucking splits. I know it's not a huge sample, but he got four full games without Jarek McKinnon, and they rode his ass. Pause. They rode his ass down the stretch, all right? Look at Pacheco on the right side. 20 half PPR points per game, 22.3 full PPR points per game. And, of course, like the upside for a guy like Pacheco rides in the fact that with McKinnon playing, he averaged 2.9 targets per game. With McKinnon out, he became the bell cow. 5.25 targets per game. His receiving yards, his receiving touchdowns, his receptions, even his rush attempts, his rushing touchdowns, everything went up when they gave him that three down roll and he went crazy. Like these numbers over a full year, obviously it's not smart to just extrapolate four games to a full year, 
But if they're comfortable giving him this workload and he can stay healthy for 14, 15 games with this workload, there's no reason he won't finish as a clear top 10 back, if not, you know, a top five back this year in fantasy. So if you want to talk about a dark horse to be, you know, a top three fantasy running back outside of the really obvious like Brees Halls and those kind of guys, Pacheco would be the dude for me. So, you know, at the end of the fourth round, early fifth round, that is like the dead zone for running backs. That's where he's going. Pick 47 right now. That's usually where you get in these old dusty backs that people like want to be good again. Pacheco is the opposite of that. He is fucking angry. He's explosive. He is Chris Carson reincarnated behind Patrick Mahomes. And I love everything about Isaiah Pacheco. I don't love everything about Najee Harris, except where he is going in drafts. And that is 87th overall, the running back 23. So you're talking about a back end RB2 possibly RB3, depending on, you know, if he falls a little bit in your drafts, eighth round. I'm just in on Najee Harris at this price. I have been very against Najee for the last couple of years in terms of where he's being drafted in fantasy drafts. You have back-to-back years where Pittsburgh has now invested first-round picks into the offensive line. You have three straight years, his entire NFL career, year after year after year, where Najee has seen at least 285 or more touches and at least eight touchdowns every single season they have an upgraded quarterback and the other like sneaky narrative that i don't think people are talking about enough is with deontay johnson being gone a guy who's averaged over nine targets per game in his career in pittsburgh that could mean a a pretty sizable uptick in targets for Najee harris right it doesn't mean i think he's gonna see like four more targets per game but even adding like one target or 1.5 targets more per game to Najee harris is an extra like 25 targets on the year, which is massive in fantasy football. And that's what made Najee Harris so great as a rookie. You remember that he he caught like 70, 73 passes or some shit like that. So I just think at this price, there's just very little downside with uh, with Najee Harris. And to be honest, I, I, I made a video on the Dynasty channel. So make sure you're subscribed over there if you're not already yesterday or like two days ago, whatever, that was talking about big movers in Dynasty rankings based on things that are happening at OTAs. And Najee Harris losing a bunch of weight was something that I mentioned in that video. I don't give a fuck about those reports. That is no reason for I I wrote this kind of right up way before uh, those reports even came out. It's cool. It maybe it's like a tiebreaker. If you really did lose some weight, then I feel even better about Najee Harris in the eighth round here. I I think the biggest like elephant in the room would be Jalen Warren, obviously. But I I think they also proved last year that while Warren is awesome, he's extremely efficient uh, on a per touch metric, like pass catching guy, really, really good. I think they also proved like down the stretch last year that they don't really envision Warren as a three down guy. I think they clearly picture Najee as that guy and nothing from the last half of last season tells me that it's like, oh, it's Warren's backfield now. So Najee down here is an extremely high floor dude that kind of all in on. And to be honest with you, as we're moving down the list, this guy is another high floor person that I might have mentioned earlier on in the video. And that is Mr. Ezekiel Elliott, the running back in Dallas. I know y'all going to hate this pick. I heard the groans. I hear the groans behind the screens, but hear me out. Hear me out. Zeke was getting buckets last year in PPR for the Pats down the stretch. I just don't think people realize how easily it's going to be for Zeke to just rumble into the end zone this year. Put it on record now. I think Zeke is going to be this year's Gus Edwards. Gus was fine last year. He was in a really good offense that elevated him. He got a fuckload of goal line touches. He ate in fantasy because of that, okay? I think Zeke is this year's Gus Edwards. Last year, the Cowboys had 20 running back goal line carries. 20 goal line carries that went to running backs last year. Tony Pollard himself had 30 inside the 10-yard line. There was only five running backs in the NFL that had more than that, okay? So when I think about Zeke, I think about 12, 13, 14 carries per game. I think about a couple targets per game maybe. And I think about the majority of goal line carries. I think Zeke is going to just monopolize the goal line carries there. And again, as I've said, I'm very high on this Dallas offense. I just think they're going to score a fuck ton. I think they're going to move the ball with these. I think they're going to find themselves inside the five-yard line often. And I think that's going to mean a ton of touchdowns for Zeke. He is going, again, pick 130 overall, running back 40. All right? I'm not telling you to draft him in the sixth or seventh round. You don't have to. He's going around like round 12, round 13, wherever the fucking math is there outside of the top 40 running backs like that's crazy to me for someone who is at worst fighting for the starting job in a high octane offense all right so Zeke to me is the easiest one of the easiest picks in all of underdog drafts right now because he won't be he'll be a ninth round pick by the time uh the summer wraps up Jerome Ford is the last guy on this list and if you've enjoyed this video thus far I feel like I'm fucking rolling right now I'm in I'm in my I am in my bag all right and if you have enjoyed the video so far all I ask is that you just scroll down below, takes a flick of the finger, hit the button that looks like this, subscribe to the channel if you're new, obviously, and go sign up on Underdog. Again, we are drafting these all summer long. 
Uh, we'll be doing them this week. We'll be doing them next week. We'll be doing streams in Underdog. And if you want to be in the streams, if you want to be in the drafts that I stream live on YouTube, all those links go into the Discord. So join the Discord. And of course, when you're on Underdog Fantasy, if it's your first time downloading and depositing $10 or more, use code BDGE and they're going to double whatever you put down on the app. All right. So if you put down 10, you're going to have $20 to play with, which means you could do six different $3 drafts. But put 40, you have 80. You'll be set for the summer, all right? Jerome Ford, 134th overall, running back 41. So just behind Zeke. I'm a fan of Jerome Ford uh, this year for fantasy. I'm not like over the moon about him, but a lot of it has to do with people's injury optimism about Nick Chubb. Like Nick Chubb's going, I think, like 25 picks higher than Jerome Ford right now. Nick Chubb is 28 years old, coming off of a massive injury. I think he's a real candidate to land himself on the pup. I think he's a real candidate to just not really ever be a good NFL running back again, unfortunately. All right. I, I have very little faith that we see like real relevant fantasy weeks out of Nick Chubb this year because I am not an injury optimist, and that has served me well. Jerome Ford last year was great for Cleveland on all three downs. All right. When you look at after Nick Chubb got hurt, in weeks three through 17, when Ford was the starter, he averaged 15 touches per game, 66.6 total yards, and 13 fantasy points per game as the RB13 in fantasy. Like, even when Nick Chubb, if he does come back and like regain a starting role or an early down role, I think Ford can be similar to what we had Kareem Hunt doing in this offense. Um, you look at last year, Jerome Ford on passing downs, the only running back with more receiving touchdowns than Jerome Ford last year was Christian McCaffrey. All right. So you look at Jerome Ford. 1,100 yards from scrimmage, nine touchdowns behind a pretty broken offensive line. If you look at this stat from Adam Fife, here are the running backs that were contacted behind the line of scrimmage at the highest rate in football last season, minimum 100 rush attempts. Jerome Ford, number one in that list. All right, Alexander Madison, Najee Harris, number three, Brees Hall, number four, Tyler Algier, number five. Okay, so Jerome Ford, I think, did the most with the little – of the situation that he got 1100 yards from scrimmage and nine touchdowns man i think he'll have a role regardless so buying him at this price of rb41 like even if he has a good first half of the year and then kind of slows down when nick chubb returns like i still think he's giving you value and i still think he's a perfect pick at this price all right i think everybody that i mentioned in this video is a perfect pick at their perfect price all right and if you want to have a perfect draft Head over to underdogfantasy.com, download the app, use promo code BDGE when you deposit for the first time, and they will double what you put down on there, and uh, and life will be good, all right? Join the Discord, yell at me in there. Mwah, I'm done yelling at you today.